Hi, and welcome to another edition of Onside SA, where we'll be talking initially about uh, the story with uh, the last one standing. We're down to 159 of them, uh, including Stevie B, who we'll be speaking to soon. And uh, he will be updating us on what he's going to take and what's going on. And Budge, 159 has come to the time where it's much tougher now. Well, Man City, Liverpool have been used by most of the people, Paul. But uh, we'll see. You know, Liverpool, hard game at Palace. While well, they should win. I think people may keep them for next week. And Man City, Chelsea. So, where, uh, where, uh, our last one at Grand Crochet. Yeah. Where's he, where, what game is he going to go watch? Uh, March first? 23rd, I think March it is. 23rd. Tottenham Man United at uh, okay. New White Hart Lane. Mourinho oh, against lovely. his old club, yeah. Excellent. Well, 23rd of, of March. Okay, righty. Right, so that's it. Get your bet. Budge will be contacting you. There's 159 odd. Yeah. And uh, get your, your selections in. I, I know the Egyptian cross is still yeah, in. Yeah, Boot's going well. Stevie Short. B is still in. Yeah. And uh, who's favourite, Budge? Well, Anthony Sir. He's got big five player. picks, done yeah. well. Done well. Shruti Anthony, player. yeah. Yeah, Shruti. He knows he's for him. He's Liverpool, man. Yeah, Liverpool, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, Let's get straight on to the rest of the show and uh, see if we've got through to our London studio. Is uh, Stevie B on the line? Hello? Morning. Good morning. Hi, we've got Stevie. How are you, Steve? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, weather nice and warm there, Steve, or are you shivering yeah. a bit? Well, no, it's, uh, it, it was plus three when I left this morning, you know, as opposed to minus three a few <laughs> days ago. So it's, uh, yeah, but I leave, uh, uh, you know, ridiculously early. So uh, I think it's going to hit a high of about seven today. So, you know, balmy. 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 Yeah, the boys in right, uh, the big news has to be Budge Pochettino. Yeah. I mean, look, we know that there have been a lot of rumblings. I think that we were expecting uh, uh, somebody like uh, Hassan Hootl or uh, Emery to go first, but yeah. it sounds as if uh, Daniel Levy has been having these discussions with Pochettino for some weeks. So, um, you know, and one assumes that uh, obviously Jose Mourinho wasn't just appointed uh, overnight for the, you know, they've been obviously having discussions with him for a little while as well. So, uh, you know, it'd be interesting, it'd be interesting to see how, you know, whether you get the sort of new manager bounce straight away and, and see if the players can respond to, to, to somebody different. Yeah, I must say, you know, Mourinho, and I didn't know this that until I heard it this morning, that he's won more trophies than Tottenham have in their entire history. You know, yeah, I mean, I saw, it was, you know, <laughs> Amazing stat when you actually look at uh, his. Re I mean, his record is exceptional uh, yeah. as a manager. I mean, over 900 games, 65% win ratio, which is astonishing, and and you know 20 20 trophies. Yeah. And when you look, compare that to uh, Maurizio Pochettino, sort of 550 games, a 45% win ratio, and, and zero trophies. So at the end of the day, you know. Fans want to win, want to win things, and Tottenham have got a proud history of winning trophies in years gone by. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, they probably, if if he's backed, and I think this is going to be the, the, the crunch, isn't it? And I'm sure part of the discussions with Daniel Levy and the board have been whether or not they're going to give him any assurances that they will make money available to him. Probably not in January, but I suspect certainly in the summer um, to actually mount a challenge to get back into that top four. Yeah. Steve, what do you think he's going to do? There's three players there who are, whose contracts are coming to an end. Ericsson, I think it's uh, Alderweireld and, and Vertonghen. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't you know, fall sitting, apart, if they don't extend their contract, do you think he's going to move them on? Well, I think if they're not going to extend their contract, then you know, there's a double-edged sword. I mean, obviously, someone like Christian Eriksen on his day is a great player, but yeah. you just don't know how unsettling it is. Because if you are, you know, a another player who um, could play in that position, and you and you're thinking, well, hold on, Christian Eriksen doesn't want to stay. He won't sign a new contract. You know, his his heart's not in it. And here I am, who I want to play for Tottenham. I haven't yeah. said I want to go yet. I'm not picked. I think I think it's unsettling, and I think um, there's no question that. I think he's a strong he's a strong man, Mourinho. And I think if he has players who don't want to play for him, I think he'd have no qualms about moving them on um, as quickly as he can and getting players in that do want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, for instance, you know, I believe he's going to sit down with those three uh, guys and also Danny Rose. Yeah. And say, uh, yeah, I mean, Danny Rose has, has still got while on his contract. Well, I think that it, you just don't know. You don't. We don't know quite what's happening behind the scenes. Though it may well be that one or two have sort of fallen out a bit with Pochettino. 
it might be with a new manager there who gives assurances if he says, look, the board has said to me, there is money available, we're going to strengthen, we want you to be part of it, will you sign a new contract? You know, I'm sure they'll have to, I wouldn't be surprised if they have their discussions if they want to keep those players. Uh, and if they still don't want to sign, then I think uh, definitely then, you know, what is the point of keep playing players who don't want to play for you? Because it has to have an effect. And, you know, you can't, you know, if you look at their results this season and the tail end of last season in the Premier League, you know, they have been way below par. I know what Mourinho did when he was at Old Trafford. Bastian Schweinsteiger was there and he didn't like him. He, I think he ended up signing for the Chicago team mm -hmm. in America. He made yeah, him Chicago train with the under-21s. He didn't want him near his first squad. He made him train with under-21s, sure. Bastian. Well, I, I think that if, if and, and that happens across the board, I think if a player, if, if a manager, a coach feels that a player is a disruptive influence, then I think that is, you know, arguably that's probably the right thing to do because you don't want you don't want that particular player to be uh, you know to be turning the heads of others. And I think yeah. you, know, you do want a united squad, and that doesn't seem to be that at the moment. He's also got to get sort of players who have gone off, someone like Deli Ali. I mean, yeah. he's just almost anonymous uh, mm. at times, you know, and he's not even in the, picked in the England squad now, you know, mm. for somebody that was, you know, a year or a couple of years ago was almost sort of first choice in, in the England team. So I think he you know, wants to hopefully get back to getting some of those players back to where they were. Um, and he's got some good young players there. Maybe, you know, it's an opportunity for some of them to come through. Yeah. What's happening to Poch now? Pochettino, where do you think he'll end up? Um, I would have thought he'll have a little bit of a break and then he'll go, I, I suspect he'll he'll move away from the uh, Premier League. I just, you just sort of think that... You just, I just wonder, I mean, whether or not, you know, I mean, look, he's a good manager and there will be clubs out there that are going to want him. So I think he'll probably take a little bit of time out. Arsenal? Uh, they come home. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one because uh, I wonder whether or not, with everything that's going on at Arsenal, whether Daniel Levy thought, look, if we don't make our move soon, yeah. uh, if that Arsenal job comes up, and uh, Mourinho could, could well have gone for that. So, um, you know, if you'd have asked me a few weeks ago if I had thought which one of those two clubs he could have ended up bearing in mind the way that uh, Arsenal was struggling as well, you know, I think some people might have plumped for Arsenal first. So, um, you know, so I, and I think I really do think that you know Emery is uh, hasn't got long left if uh, they carry on as they are. Yeah, and there's no talk where you are, Steve, about uh, United coming in for Pochettino. I, that's gone very quiet. That's gone very. But then you know. You, one never knows. So if, if United don't sort of um, sort of turn their fortunes around a little bit between now and uh, let's say the end of December, then you know it, it's it's not beyond the realm of the possibility, is it? That uh, and I think they want to try and be loyal to to Oli, but yeah. but obviously it is as we know it's a results based yeah. business. Yeah. And if United uh, continue to to underperform and find themselves sort of way off the pace, I mean they're obviously they're off the pace at the moment, but you know they're sitting in. Sevens, but you know, if they find themselves after Christmas way off the place pace, then um, I think that is a distinct possibility they might look at Pochettino. Yeah. Now, Steve, this week Tottenham will uh, Mourinho get off to a winning start? Well, it's interesting. Mourinho doesn't. You know, West Ham are a bit of a bogey team for him. Uh, he's had some bad results across at uh, both Upton Park and the, the London Stadium. But you know, as we say, you often get this sort of new manager bounce. Tottenham haven't won away since January. It wouldn't surprise me. They'll go there and win. West Ham have been pretty woeful recently. Yeah, have, you know, yeah. but, but they are due a good performance. And I think that uh, Pellegrini's in a little bit of, under a bit of pressure as well. Because if they lose this, then uh, they could find themselves really all very closely sucked into the, you know, close to the bottom three. So I think, it's a, I think this, this one could go either way. But I, I, might just, I might just fancy that Tottenham, some of those players might have a point to prove. And I wouldn't be surprised if Tottenham go there and win. Uh, team who's going, who's flying at the moment, oh, Leicester City. You see that continuing at Brighton? I, I, I think they could, I mean, look, one never knows because obviously with the break, but yeah. I think if Leicester, Leicester carry on as uh, they have been recently, I, 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 think they, I think they could go there and, and win at Brighton. All right. Now, Liverpool flying hard, too good for Palace? They should be, but I, I, I read this morning that uh, both Andy Robertson and Mo Salah are, have got sort of uh, little injuries that uh, the concern, and Joel Matip's still out. So I think they'd miss Andy Robertson definitely and Mo Salah, yeah. but I think they'll be too strong for uh, Palace. I mean, Palace like to sit sit deep and catch teams on the break, but uh, you know Liverpool. 
probably should have too much for them. All right. Now, the big game is Man City at home to Chelsea. How do you see that yeah, one I think, I think I think it's a really, really interesting game. I think a lot, you know, going to see a couple of reasons. Obviously, City need to bounce back. I mean, it was, uh, you know, a sh shocking defeat for them, really, at uh, Liverpool. But Chelsea are playing some lovely football away from home. They sort of go away from home without fear that, you know, they, they sit deep and catch teams on the break. But I'm not sure sitting deep against City is always the best tactics. Yeah. I think uh, Chelsea's best tactics, you'd think, would be uh, attacking them because City's defence against uh, those sort of fast, young Chelsea players, I think could be an interesting test. I think City would probably still come out on top, but if Chelsea could catch them, and I think if City were to lose this and Liverpool win, I think that you're getting to the point where that gap is going to start to become pretty unassailable. Yeah, no. My boys, Man United, good victory, a last away victory at Norwich. Can we continue that it, at well, uh, Bramall Lane? Well, it's... Uh, uh, this is going to be an interesting game because obviously Sheffield United have, have really been playing well. Yeah. Um, you know, they were superb in their last home game and they beat Burnley comfortably. And, and they're going to be up for it because this is a big scout for, for any team. I, I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if United can avoid defeat there. But you know, they, need, they need some of their players. I understand they've got quite a few of their players back in training, so yeah. Luke Shaw and... So, and if Marcus Rashford can uh, show the sort of form that uh, I, think, I think he's capable of, I think United could go there and win, but I think it's going to be very, very tight. Yeah, I agree with you. Steve, onto the championship. The big game for you is obviously Friday night, local derby yeah, against QPR. Like, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a game. Look, we, we, Fulham now have two home games. We play QPR at home tomorrow night and next Tuesday night home to Derby. Yeah. You know, nothing less than, say, four points. Six would be good, four points minimum. We can't afford to lose uh, either of those games because we are, we're, we're sitting in seventh. We're just off the playoff place, yeah. but we're in danger of falling behind. So it's going to be a tight game. QPR score a lot of goals and concede a lot of goals. We, we're without Mitrovic. He's suspended for the game. Okay. After his fifth booking in the last match, I have to, I have to plump for my my boys, but they're going to have to play better than they did in our last home outing against Hull. Yeah, it's strange. I see you've been conceding plenty of goals at home lately, Steve. Yeah, I mean that's disappointing, and that's something that I think uh, you hope Scott Parker's going to address, yeah. especially as you know we have so much of the ball and so much of the game, but uh, teams sort of catch us on the break, and we just. You know, we just it's like it, you know, gets Hull. It was a couple of sucker punches in the game, and that did for us. Yeah, uh, Brist, Brentford, Reading. Obviously, Brentford, another. I think I think there'd be a closer game than the league table suggests because Reading yeah. under Mark Bowen have started to show a bit of form mm -hmm. uh, since he's joined them. Brentford, a funny team. I mean, they seem much stronger away from home than they are at home. But uh, I think it'll be close. I think Brentford, but but no more than than a goal. <clears throat> Bristol City, Notts Forest, Steve. Should be a good yeah, game. Yeah, I think this would, be, this would be a really good game. Uh, Bristol City you know, just surprised me. Uh, you know, they keep sort of, when I keep thinking after they sell their best players that they're going to struggle and, and they're up there again. I think Forest have had a little bit of a wobble. I wouldn't, I, I'd be, I fancy Bristol. Again, really close game, but I fancy Bristol by a goal. Okay, now Derby County, you've got my beloved Preston. Can we get a point yeah. or upset them? I, I, I think. I think Preston are more than capable of holding Derby. Derby have been stronger, strong at home, but yeah. very poor away. Um, and again, as I said, Derby have got Preston on Saturday, and then they play at Fulham on Tuesday. So, you know, and they're they're struggling. You know, overall Derby. I think Preston, you know, showing a lot of fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if they could hold Derby. Yeah, we'd take a point, no doubt. Now Stoke City under Michael O'Neill. They won their first game. Do you think this is two yeah, in a row? Yeah, that was a, it. Was a big, it was a good win for them at Barnsley. I think they'll be too strong for Wigan. Yeah. Wigan again, one of those teams, strong at home but very poor away. I think Stoke will be too strong for them. And last but not least, Steve West Brom at home against Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, I think West Brom will win that. They're playing very well. Um, Wednesday, you know, sort of there or thereabouts have been made themselves hard to beat. But I think West Brom probably just be a little bit too strong for them. Yeah. But there are some, as I say, there's some very good games in the championship this yeah. weekend. Um, and then obviously there's a whole round of fixtures next week as well. So, you know, some teams that, teams that could win both of these games come next weekend, you know, they could find themselves in a very strong position. Yeah, that's true. All Stevie, right, Steve. that's, that's, that's uh, excellent. Thanks very much for the news. And I just uh, want to hope that you keep going with the last one standing because a bird seems to think he's going to go through. Yeah, well, this I say, this is uh, this is as far as I've ever been. So uh, a lot of pressure, but I'm, I'm, I reckon I'm, I can handle it. Stevie, <laughs> once again, thanks very much. Huh? All right, Steve. All the best. All the best, Stevie. Bye. Cheers.
Right, Buzz, let's go on to Premiership fixtures. Yeah. Okay, let's start with uh, West Ham Spurs. You've discussed it with Steve. Do you yeah. concur? Yeah, I think, Paul, it's time to put up or shut up. You know, contracts yeah. are on the line now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, squad, been, the squad is strong. Paul, the third best squad in, in, in England. Yes. You know, you've yeah. got the best striker in England, I believe, in yeah, Harry Kane. That's right. You've got you know, great you've got players, players all around. You've bought some quality. You've got quality players yeah. who play for their countries. Yeah. And as you say, it's, uh, okay. you know, stand up and be counted. Yeah, now. it's just sorting the change room out to the training pitch. Guys, you want to be here, you don't. You? Yeah. You're not going to be here, go and train with under-19s yeah. and just ostracise them, Paul. Absolutely. And get them out the squad. Get yeah. players that cruel, want to be there. Cruel to get results, but I'm with you all the way. No, and West Ham. Arsenal, I think, will be hard to beat. Now, what is the story with the, the, the budget? Your, your take on the Southampton boss? I'm surprised he's still got the job. You know, the only thing is he got them out of it last year. Yes. Hasn't really spent much money, and they've, they've got a better home record. Oh, it's a better away record than at home. At yes. home, they're terrible, and they've played the better teams. But I can't have them, Paul. Yeah, but they'll sit tight. But I just think Arsenal wear them down, Paul. And Arsenal, they they've to, only won two to. of the last ten league games. Arsenal, you know, normally the Emirates was a fortress. They've drawn a few games, yeah. but you've got to think they've got to beat Southampton at home. Okay, I'm going through the ones you go. Yep. Going to Bournemouth back at home. Wolves this should be a good town. game. Good well, game. The Goals? only thing is, you know, I like Wolves of the two team. Bournemouth, a lot of their players are now playing in Europe. You know, Joshua Kings at Norway. You know, the uh, the other centre forward, good players. You know, Harry yeah. Wilson's at uh, for Wales. Mm. I just wonder, the guy that's centre half, uh, Nathan Aki, he scored for Holland the other day. Is he it? The Holland he scored a oh, good header. You know, Bournemouth, Paul, I don't know, against these better teams. I know they beat United. United were woeful. But Wolves are a funny team. They're unbeaten in seven. This has got a draw written all over it, but I just okay. think Wolves are legit. Brighton, can they hold Leicester? No, I don't see it, Paul. They're playing well. They are playing well. You know, Brighton. the thing is, Every Leicester, week. you know, I'm going to take 12 to 10 Leicester to finish in the top two. People think I'm mad. I just think it's great value. So and then also, you must take 11 to 10 here. No, no, 11 to 10, Paul. You know, okay. you have a look at it. They're not going to go for the League Cup. Well, they're in the quarterfinal. They may mix and match their team. They're not going to go for the FA Cup. Rogers wants Champions League football. They've got one game a week. All yeah. the other teams yeah. will be Champions League, the FA Cup. That's why you need a squad. Need a squad. They, they haven't got a big squad, but they're 13, 14 players of quality. Yeah. You know, Madison never played for England. You know, Vardy, they've got players, Paul. Yeah. I think they'll be too good for Brighton. Okay, Crystal Palace, Liverpool, Liverpool too strong? They should be, Paul. You never know with Crystal Palace, a Jekyll and Hyde team, but you've got to think Liverpool, 4 to 10. Everton, probably. Norwich. Now, Norwich have, have lost their way, yeah. if I can use that term. But if they put it all together, because Everton, uh, they, I saw them yeah. against Spurs, I thought they were bad. I saw yeah. them the week before that. The manager's been sitting on the, yeah. the crosshairs. They don't borrow tried. time for a while, Paul. Yeah. You know, their last four games, they've won two. They should never have lost to Brighton. They, they were two and up. was never a penalty. Yeah. And then they scored the own goal. Yeah. Against Spurs, you know, I think that broken leg could, you know, pull them all together here. Yeah, it's a reality pulled, they pulled check. one of our players unfairly yeah, off. 100%. They and shouldn't have won. 97th but, uh, minute, they, they, they equalised. Yeah. You know, Norwich haven't scored in the last five away games. Oh, that's a bad step. So that's a terrible, you know, you look at that, you know, just defensively, they're woeful. Yeah. So you can park the bus, but Everton, Paul, I think they'll be too strong. Okay. They'll come out flying. I think they'll score in both halves. Yeah. Watford are now trying but, to creep off the bottom. Now, this is a but good Burnley, game, Paul, but Burnley are tough to beat. Yeah, they win games. Yeah, this is a set piece game. Draw Burnley for me here, Paul. But uh, nothing would surprise you in that game, Paul. Watford have goal scorers, and I think Troy Deeney may be back as well. Man, Man City, Chelsea. See a draw or Man City? Yeah, it should be Man City. But, you know, Lampard, they've won their last five away from home. Yeah. And they're good to watch, Paul. As long as they don't sit back and give them the ball. But Kante is the key man. Yeah. yeah he only gets lost it. to Liverpool. Only right? lost to Liverpool, seven of the last eight. Paul, any results possible here? Yeah, I'm not sold on Man City. They're brilliant going forward, but defensively they're suspect. And Tammy yeah. Abram and them, they'll give them a game, Mason yeah. Mount. But, yeah. you know, four to ten, Man City are a quality team, especially attack wise. De Bruyne yeah. was superb the other day. I watched him against. Yeah, no, no, they, they got uh, the players. I see Morris wants to move, eh? Yeah. Well, he hasn't, not getting a game. Not Paul. getting a game. Good player. Good player sitting on the bench. Sheffield United, Man United, no, but if, United, but, Sheffield United have played well. Give yeah. them credit. They should have beaten Spurs away. Yeah. They were they were way better than us. Yeah. They 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 got a good coach. They yeah, they're well organised. Well, well I just think this is tailor made for us. Yeah, we play well on the break. Got a lot of pace now. If Martial's fit, which reportedly is, I think we can win, Paul. Twelve to tens in my bets. It should be a good game. Okay. And we've got our full squad. I fancy United, Paul. Okay, Villa 17th playing Newcastle. Oh, this 13th. should be a cracker, Paul. I think there's goals in this game. You know, Steve Bruce won three of the last five. 
You know, and Aston Villa are good to watch at home. They've only lost to Liverpool at home in the last few games. I think there's goals written all over this, but this is a big game for Aston Villa. They're only a There's few no points ab- the back for Villa. reportedly poor, but we'll see what happens at, uh, over the weekend. But okay. you never know to trust the press. But uh, I like Villa with the two teams, Paul. All right, how about the championship? But you've uh, gone through a few games. Fulham's the early kickoff Friday well, night. You know, it's all Steve, they're conceding too many goals, Paul. But there again, so at QPR, they've conceded yeah. two goals in the last few games. Goals looks the, the right thing, but it's amazing after the international break. Mm. Tends to be a little bit of a cagey affair, but I think Fulham, but without Mitrovic, I didn't know he wasn't playing. It obviously brings QPR, but Fulham have got plenty of quality, Paul. They should win, especially at home. They're they're a good team, I thought. Charlton against Cardiff. Well, Cardiff fired Neil Warnock. That's right, they fired Neil Harris from Cardiff. He's taken over, but they've been terrible. They haven't won away in eight games, Cardiff. But uh, Charlton have just fallen off the, the cliff lately, the boyish team. But it's mm. a lunchtime kickoff. If I have to have a bet, Paul, I'd go for Charlton. Okay. But, uh, Blackburn, Barnsley. Paul, Barnsley beat Fulham in the first game. Haven't won since. That's 15 games. They're going to get relegated. You know, Blackburn, they, I think the bottom of the league, Barnsley. Blackburn only won one of seven. But if ever there's an opportunity to get back to winning ways, especially at home at Ewood Park, yeah. I think seven to ten Blackburn all days. Brentford, Reading, you yeah, guys I'll discussed. Fancy Brentford, Brentford Paul, eh? you know, a good team. A South African guys on the team. Makochi played the other day when we won. Uh, for Brentford? He plays for Brentford. Yeah, Where did he come nice from? Player, midfield player. I think he's from Cape Town Spurs originally. Okay. But, uh, I think they'll be too good for Reading, even though Mark Bowen, the left back that was at Wales and Norwich yeah. left back, he's done well with them. But Brentford, Paul, lurker team to sneak into the playoffs. Bristol City, they're... they're, they're like, yeah, Paul, I've been singing Forest praises. I've watched them. They've been They're fifth and sixth. You know, Dawson's reportedly back. I think a draw on Forest for me there, Paul. But uh, Steve said, you know, yeah. Bristol City sell players and they just keep hanging in. Yeah, they, 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 a good they, job, they, they do a good job. Forest for the two teams. Yeah, no, you've got to go to Derby. Not easy. Not easy. We've got a terrible record there. Derby have won. I think it's the last three at home. You know, we're on a run, Paul. We've won our last three. But away from home... You know, we get a draw there, Paul. Okay. But, uh, not an easy place, Derby County, especially for us Preston boys, yeah? One, two, three in the exotics for my loyalty. But if I had how to. Do you, how does it feel? Still a long way back. Yeah, I like Huddersfield, Paul. Preston beat them 3 0. We swamped them. They were unbeaten in seven prior to that. Birmingham lost six of the last seven away from home. I can't believe it because I watched them at home at St Andrews. And there were two games on, they played great, but away from home, they've lost six or seven. I think it was only Swansea they beat. So it should be Huddersfield, Paul, if, if you're looking at the, the, the stats. Yeah. 16 or 10 Huddersfield, it should be. Luton Town will battle against Well, Leeds. they should do, Paul. You know, they, they're struggling, but they do score goals. Leeds, the last four games, they've drawn two and lost two. Oh. But uh, my Preston boys tell me it's the best team they've played this year. They certainly Five to ten, yeah. Yeah, they've got a couple of good games coming up, but they've been struggling at home, Leeds. Yeah. But away from home, their record's decent. They should beat Luton. Stoke City turned it around at last. Yeah, I think so, Paul. You know, you get an experienced squad and all of a sudden a a decent manager. Yeah, well, they won their last game. They won at Barnsley. But we're going to struggling, Paul. Away from home, they're terrible. Eight to ten Stoke City all day. Swansea, Millwall? You know, Swansea have got a great... Great away record at home. I think they've only won one out of five. Now, more hmm. ball under Gary Wright, the new manager. They've had a, a nice little run. I think there could be a draw here, Paul. Swansea should win. They're going well in the league. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if more will pinch a point. West Brom, Sheffield? Should be, Paul. But the last, I think the last five games at home, they've conceded two goals at home. Sure. They won three and drawn two. I think there's plenty of goals in that game, Paul. West Brom, I think, will come up automatically. But Gary Monks at Sheffield Wednesday has done a good job with them. Yeah. A difficult uh, place to go to, but I think West Brom and plenty of goals. Will Hull have to go all the way up north to Middlesbrough? Yeah, Paul, you know, Middlesbrough, I think they haven't won in nine. I think they've only scored five goals in, the, in those nine games. Jonathan Woodgate's under pressure. If he doesn't yeah. get a result the next couple of games, Paul, he's gone. That Jared Bowen at Hull, mm. they've won three of the last five. But I just think it's uh, got nil-nil, one all written over that yeah. game, Paul. Very pressurised game, especially for Middlesbrough. Let's talk local. Telcom. Telcom yep. uh, knockout legs, semi-final. Two legs. Yeah. First leg. Well, the top games at uh, Sugar Ray Kulu Stadium in Claremont. Now, they played 10 days ago, Paul, and Arrows beat them 3-2. Are they two Natal teams, eh? Yep. Uh, Marisburg did great. They beat, uh, they beat Vitz. They won both games in a penalty shootout. The top game, Paul, you just never know, was Sundowns. The last five, they haven't really been playing well. 
But uh, big game, big team. I think they'll win, Paul, but I wouldn't be oh. taking 9-10, to 10, purely because it's the, the first leg. Yeah, yeah. Now, the chiefs Marisburg game has been played in Nelspred, in Bombela Stadium. I can't believe that betting, Paul. I know they've got a few injuries and a couple of suspensions, but Maritzburg at Harry Guala are hard to beat. Yeah. But away from home, Paul, I think they've only beat Cape Town City away. 12-10 to 10 Chiefs all day for me there, Paul. Okay, let's go look at our uh, soccer sixes, Budge. Yeah, the exotics, yeah. Well, look, I've gone the field in the Bournemouth Wolves game. I think Everton will be too strong for Norwich. I went West Brom, win and draw at home against Sheffield Wednesday. I went Nottingham Forest, win and draw at Bristol City. I think Stoke will beat Wigan at home. And I've gone the field in the Huddersfield, Birmingham City, because we can spend 200 rand. Okay, the other soccer six, I've gone the field in the Golden Arrow Sundowns game. I've banked Arsenal to beat Southampton, Leicester to win at Brighton, Liverpool to win at Crystal Palace, and I've gone the field in the Watford Burnley and Man City Chelsea games, looking for upsets, Paul 162. Let's look at the 10. On to the 10, yeah, I've, I've gone Sundowns win and draw at Golden Arrows. I've banked Arsenal to beat Southampton, likewise, Leicester to be too good for Brighton, and Liverpool to win at Crystal Palace. I've gone the field in the Watford Burnley clash. A second page, I've gone the field in the Bournemouth Wolverhampton fixture. I've banked Everton to beat Norwich. I've gone West Brom win and draw at home against Sheffield Wednesday. I've gone Nottingham Forest win and draw at Bristol City. And I've gone Man City win and draw at home against Chelsea. Obviously, if you want to halve your perm, you know, you could bank the West Brom or Man City accordingly. But two 88 as I play in that particular soccer team. All right, the big one. On to the 13. Can you believe it? Our mate caught it last week. It paid two grand. All we 13. Got toy, all 13. Yeah, we got 12. Went for an upset in the one game and we got stitched. But on to this 13. I've gone Man City win and draw at home against Chelsea. I've banked Arsenal to beat Southampton. Liverpool to beat Crystal Palace. Everton to beat Norwich City. I've sided with Wolverhampton Wanderers not to get beat at Bournemouth. I think Leicester will be too good for Brighton. I've gone Burnley, win and draw at Watford. A second page, I've banked Leeds to beat Luton Town. I've gone West Brom, win and draw at home against Sheffield Wednesday. I've sided with Notts Forest, win and draw at Bristol City. Taking the Cowards approach, but I think it's a tough game. I've gone the field in the Derby Preston game. Okay. I've banked, banked Brentford to beat Reading. And I've gone Swansea City, win and draw at home against Millwall, 326. All right, Budgie's best bets. Yeah, the Premiership, Talk to me. Paul. Yeah, the teams are like, the, the prices were way short, so I had to try and, and get a slightly better odds. I think Everton and Man City will score in both halves okay. against uh, Norwich and, and Chelsea. I think Leicester will be too good for Brighton, and I fancy Man United to win at Sheffield United, 3,300 to 200. Uh, championship bet, I've gone Blackburn Rovers to beat Barnsley. I've gone Stoke to beat Wigan. I've gone Notts Forest to avoid defeat at Bristol City. Notts Forest win or draw. Yeah. And I've gone West Brom to beat Sheffield Wednesday and both teams to score. 3,400 to 200. Both teams to score? Yeah, I did the, 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 the over two and a half I added purely because there was no South African games this week. There's only two telcoms. So my both teams to score sides are Bournemouth Wolves, Watford Burnley, Aston Villa, Newcastle, Charlton, Carter City, and Swansea, Millwall. Paul, that was 16 to 1. I went over two and a half goals. I've gone Crystal Palace, Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, Aston Villa, Newcastle, Luton, Leeds, and West Brom, Sheffield Wednesday. Paul, 2,700 okay. to 200. The Spanish omelet. Yeah, it's not the omelet. I've gone the treble this week. I think Atletico Madrid will beat Granada. I've gone Barcelona to score in both halves, uh, both halves against Leganes. And I've gone Villarreal to beat Salta Vigo and both teams to score, 2,600 to 200. And our Collis King, six or Nixa. Yeah. I think Everton will beat Norwich. I fancy Man United to win at Sheffield United. I think Stoke will beat Wigan. Barcelona should be too strong for Leganes. I like Atletico Madrid to beat Granada. And I think 12 to 10 Kaiser Chiefs ball to beat Maritzburg. Now, there were only two teams bigger than even money in that bet. They worked out at 34 to 1. I couldn't believe it when I worked Great it odds. all out. Great but. odds. So let's have a dip and let's see where we go. All right, Bud, your best bet. Paul, I, you know, I was going to go Leicester, but just a bit concerned after the international break. Shouldn't be saying tongue in cheek, but I just think Kaiser Chiefs, Paul, they've got to beat Maritzburg. It's yeah. a two legged, it's their home game. Harry Guile will be tough to. 
tough to get a result at. You know, the goalkeeper's injured, the Nigerian. Katsunde's missing the midfield play. I don't think he's much of a loss. And uh, there was one other player missing, the centre half, Tala Matogo. But I've just seen. Tala Matogo. I just seen they'll be too good for Maritzburg, Paul. It's a massive game for Maritzburg. It'll be yeah. a full ass. All Chief supporters. <laughs> she scored goals, Paul. I think they'll win 2 0. Yeah. So that's my best bet, 12 to 10. And uh, your value bet? It's Huddersfield, Paul, purely because Birmingham away from home. They've lost six out of seven. You know, Huddersfield were unbeaten in seven under the Cowleys until they got beat at Preston. Apparently, we blitzed them in the first half. We were 3 0 up. And yeah, they fought hard in the second. So 16 to 10, Paul, that's a big price, especially against a team that have been terrible away from home. Excellent, that's good to see. Right, you've heard it all there from Budge, and we've spoken to Stevie B. We want to now ask you to remember to put your bets on for last one standing. 159 people left. Let's get rolling, and it's going to be tough. I can tip you there'll be less than 50, but uh, we just need a few draws, Budge. What do you think? Oh, it's Big, you know, Paul, they've said that most of the big teams have been used. Your Liverpool, Man yeah. City's. Several views, Man United last week, which I don't think. But I think Everton and, and Arsenal will be your plum picks this week. Excellent. Okay. So uh, until next time, stay on side.